purpose in your mind to worship the Lord on today. For he inhabits the praises of his people. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for this day. We invite you in. We will not rush this moment. We gather ourselves and we gather ourselves in this moment to thank you for who you are. And thank you for all the wonderful things that you are doing in our lives. Hallelujah. What a beautiful day it is to worship the Lord. There are so many things going on in this country and in this world and even in our personal lives, but God is yet faithful. We serve a faithful God that he is faithful to his children. Hallelujah. I want to turn your attention this morning to one of my favorite scriptures and something that the Lord has reminded me of just over the last few weeks and as things in, in our lives are changing and things in this economy are changing, God had to remind me of his word and this morning, I'm so glad that I have an opportunity to remind you of his word in Psalms 37 beginning with verse 23. The word of the Lord reads, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholded him with his hand. And this is the part that touches my heart and the part that I want to share with you. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Anything that you stand in need of on this day, Anything that your heart desires, the Lord is ready to answer your prayers, to answer your desires, to give you clarity, to give you direction. His word says that he would supply every need. His word says that he is the Lord and he is our shepherd and we shall not want. And so I want you to charge and tell God what his word says, that anything that you stand in need of this morning, that I pray, Father, that your people will receive what they need on today. God, we thank you for this day. God, we humble ourselves and we humble our minds and we humble our hearts, Father God, and we come before you thanking you for who you are. Thanking you for your son, Jesus, and the sacrifice that he made for our sins, Father God that we would have access to you and that we can come boldly to your throne and call you Father and call you Abba and you will hear the cry of your children. We pray on this day for your word, Lord God, that your word will do exactly what you sent for it to do, Lord God. We pray for our bishop, Lord God, that everything that is in him, Father God, to speak to us, Lord God, that we would be open, Lord God, that we would be good ground, ready for the seed of your word. We thank you, Father God, for this virtual experience. We thank you for everyone who will hear this word, who will come back to hear this word, that this, Father God, will be the word that will catapult us into the next dimension, that will send us, Father God, forward, Lord God. We thank you for who you are, and we bless your holy name. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Don't forget to click like, share, and start a watch party in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Listen, we invite you this morning to join us as we sing songs of praise and worship unto God. Right where you are, help us say this. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Yes, God. I will wait on you. Yeah. I will trust in you. Yes, God. I will trust in you. You. Yeah. The Lord is my light and salvation. 
Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Help me say it. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on him. Yeah. I will wait on you, you. I will trust in you. Anybody trusting in the Lord this morning? I will trust in you, you. One more time. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation whom shall I fear whom shall I be afraid I will wait on you yes God I will wait on you you I will trust in you oh God I will trust in confident in this I will see the goodness of the Lord anybody believe that this morning yeah I will remain confident in this I will see the goodness of the Lord now listen right where you are in your homes just put your hands together and help us celebrate the Lord today hallelujah We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. Yeah. You are the everlasting God. Why don't you help me say it right where you are? Help me say it. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting. Anybody believe he's the everlasting? He's the everlasting God. One more time, help me say it. Oh, we set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting, everlasting God. Are the everlasting God. One more time, help us say it. Whoa, we set our hope on you. We set our hope on the love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. Yes, God. You are the everlasting God. Now, right here, take a moment and just begin to celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we bless you today. We magnify you today, God. You are the everlasting God. One last time, help me say it. Oh, we set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting. God, you are the everlasting God. Oh, I will remain confident in this. I'll see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I'll see the goodness of the Lord. One more time. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will wait on you. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I will wait God, I will trust in 
you. God, we put our trust in you this morning. I will trust in you. You. I will wait on you. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I will wait on you. You. I will trust in you. God, we trust in you today. I will trust in you.
Inspiring Temple of Praise Church, our virtual worship. I would ask that you would forgive us for our late start for the technical difficulties or sometimes, uh, you know, beyond our, beyond our control, but we were able to get things back up and running and whatnot, and we are happy, glad that you have decided to join us this morning. Certainly want to welcome those of you that are visiting with us. Want to reiterate what Minister Camille has already issued. We are happy, glad, and excited to have you a part of our ministry on this morning. It is always our prayer, uh, always our prayer, uh, that nothing about our flesh will get in the way of what the Spirit of the Lord desires to do. That everything that we do is for the glory of God and ultimately is for your edification. And so our prayer is that uh, our flesh will not get in the way and that God will be glorified in all that we do. Uh, in the name of the Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. I want to thank those of you of ITOP that are with us this morning and we're patient. Amen. We're late getting started, but that's all right. I thank you for being patient and joining us. Even at this hour, we welcome you. 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 And we give God praise, glory, and honor that you are faithful as you are. Uh, for Lord knows you don't have to be, but you are. And we thank God for you, both in your attendance, your support, your prayers, but also in your sub your sustenance, your your substance rather, uh, giving into the ministry such as you are, so that the ministry can remain effective and in operation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, again, welcome, 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 visitors from wherever you are, all over the land, all over the United States of America, and even abroad. We thank you that you have tuned in this morning, and again. We hope and pray that you are blessed thereby. Just wanna, just wanna take a moment and and uh, offer up prayers for those uh, of you that are that are in a difficult way, whether it be by uh, financial difficulties because of this pandemic and because of the economy being shut down, loss of loss of jobs. We want you to be encouraged today, and know that uh, know that uh, God is a way maker and He is a provider that his ways are not our ways, his mind is not our mind. God is doing something. He is doing something that is uh, prophetic and, and profound, uh, that when it's all said and done, uh, will place and position his people into a place of blessings and favor uh, that we could not even imagine. The Bible says that ears have not heard, eyes have not seen what the Lord has prepared for them that love him. And we believe that God is doing something profound in positioning and posturing his people in order for the next level blessing. I'm believing that. I'm declaring that. I'm decreeing that over every Itopian and over everybody that is connected to us. That there is no weapon formed against us. That the enemy's devices and his plots are already defeated. That God shall and will be glorified in our lives. Somebody ought to give God praise just for that. Amen. That God is going to be glorified and his person, 
his majesty, his power, his enablement is going to be made manifest in the earth realm through the people of God that are in fact submitted to him and refuse to walk away from the blessings of the Lord even during this pandemic. That we're going to hold on and we're going to see what the change is going to be because we know that God is up to something. If there is somebody near you, you ought to touch him and tell him God is up to something. I don't know, I don't know specifically what it is, but I'm believing God that I'm going to increase even during this time of pandemic, that there will be no decrease in my life. Somebody shout amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. But we are yet proudful for those of you that are yet having a difficult time. I want to invite you that if you are, that if you're needing food and whatnot, we as a ministry, we seed into the community food bank of Fort Worth. The community food bank of Fort Worth is found on Galvez Street. I don't believe in reinventing the wheel, but if you need food on a regular basis, the community food bank of Fort Worth, we seed into that, into that uh, uh, nonprofit every month to make sure that, that we are part of the resources that are being provided for the citizens of Tarrant County. And so if you're needing that kind of help, uh, I, want to, I want to invite you to run by uh, the Community Food Bank of Fort Worth. Amen. Uh, but uh, some of us are having emotional and psychological and even spiritual wrestlings uh, because we understand that, uh, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That we understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. And sometimes the enemy can overwhelm us in our mind and in our spirit to cause us to believe that the Lord has forsaken us. And I want to let you all know that God, number one, has not forsaken you. But if you need prayer, if you need counseling, all you have to do is call our church, 817-870-9828. Our prayer counselors, our prayer intercessors will call you back and they will begin to intercede for you and put you on our prayer list to make sure that you are all right during this time of difficulty. For you don't have to walk through this all by yourself. There are people around you. There are people a part of the ministry. There are people that are continually praying with and for you so that you will come out on the other side with victory. It's already won. You just got to get to the other side. Yeah, God. It's already won. You just got to get to the other side. One more time. It's already won. You just got to get to the other side. And even if getting to the other side remind, uh, requires you to grab on to some, some broken pieces, even if it requires you to grab on to something that that that, 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 that is, that is a, a seemingly dismantled, grab hold of it and watch God bring you to your place of victory. Watch God bring you to your place of favor. Watch God do it in your life like he's never done it before so that you can have a testimony of the saints just like God did it for mama. He did it for me. That way you can have a resume of victories that, that the same God that brought you through your yesterday trials and tribulations is the same God that's going to bring you through this. Just hold on until you get to the other side. Don't you let the enemy take your peace away. Don't you let the enemy take your joy away. Hold on until you see your change come. Somebody shout amen. I'm holding on until I see my change come because I know that God is working it out. Work it out. Work it out. Work it out. Work it out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so we're praying that you hold on until you see your change come, that you not succumb to the devices of the enemy, that you know, in fact, God is working something out. If you need that prayer, if you need spiritual counseling and just for somebody to walk you through these difficult days, call our church, 817-870-9828. Our intercessors will call you back. Our, our executive pastor will make contact with you and we will call you back just to make sure that you are all right and that we can provide what you need, the resources, maybe the agencies that we need to point you to uh, to make sure that you make it through these dark and dismal days. But we're praying for you. Please know that we're praying for you. And we're believing God for you. You all can have your seat. I might be talking a while. We're believing God for you. Amen, somebody. We're believing God that all things are working together for your good. Amen. We're believing that God is going to work it out. We're believing God for you. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but we're believing God for you. We're believing God for you. We're believing God for you that it's going to work out to the glory and to the honor of the living God. Amen. Now again, beloved. 
loved. Uh, we're praying for those who are also uh, 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 overcome or have been attacked by this enemy called coronavirus. We're praying for you that God will lift that thing off of your life. If you have, in fact, uh, become victimized by this virus, we want you to know that God is able to deliver and set free. And all we're going to do is keep praying and believing that God is going to show the doctors and the nurses and the scientists what needs to be done, that you might have life and have it more abundantly, that you will not succumb to this thing. This thing is not unto death for you. Amen. That you're going to come through it and you're going to come through it even stronger. We believe in God for that. And those of you that have lost loved ones, we're pray praying for Lady Judy Noyle, uh, that we might continue to pray for her and lift her up as she lays. She has laid her her nephew to rest and whatnot, and those others who are going through. Janice, we're praying for you. Uh, Lady Williams, we're praying for you. Uh, all of our seasoned saints, we're praying for you. We're believing God for you. Please be in prayer for my wife, Kamala. She will be having uh, outpatient surgery on Tuesday, and we're believing God for her uh, to come out even better. Amen. We're, we're working on something. Amen. And sometimes you got to go through process. Sometimes you got to go through different, uh, different things in order to get to the promise. Amen, somebody. Sometimes Sometimes, let me say it again, sometimes you have to go through the process in order to get to the promise. Sometimes you have to go through the process in order to get to the promise. And, and, and what the Lord is requiring of both her and me over this past year, maybe year and a half, is to walk through difficult processes in order that we might get to the promise. Amen. For those of you that know, we've just overcome and come through a, a, a cancer attack, but the Lord has given us victory over cancer. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We give him praise for the enemy is already defeated in our lives. And now Kamala is having to walk through some things and we're believe in God for the process that he will keep her in peace. I, I, I told you that this is a season where our patience is being tested, where our perseverance is being tested. Amen, somebody, that we might come to the place where God has for us. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But you got to hold on, beloved. you got to walk through the process while God is processing you. And the process may come through doctors. It may come through whatever. It may come through surgery. That's the, that process. It may come through therapists. Whatever the process is, it may come through Texas Workforce Commission. Whatever the process is, walk through the process that you might gain the promise. Amen. Persevere. Make up your mind and be determined to put your hands on everything that God has promised you. Amen, somebody. But sometimes you have to go through the process in order to get to the promise. And I want you to be encouraged today that God is doing something wonderful on your behalf. And so if you need us, call us, praying for those of you that are going through difficult process and we're believing God for all of you that you might not only receive your healing, but that you will walk in your victory and that you will be dripping in favor continually living upon an open window of heaven. Come on, pray with me. Father, I thank and praise you, Lord, for this opportunity to share with these your people. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you be glorified in their life. And Father, in this hour, we magnify you, we glorify you, we lift you up, and we declare and decree that there is no God like you. And Father, we magnify you, we glorify you. God, we esteem you, we extol you, Father. Oh, God, uh, we praise and magnify your name for you are worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun until it's going down. Now, Father, be glorified on today. Be magnified on today. Father, help these, your servant, even myself, not to glory in your presence but to yield ourselves as a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable unto you. Father, help us to help us to become and to evolve into what you would have us to be, even if that process means walking through difficulty, walking through challenges, walking through discouragement, walking through depression. Don't let us get stuck in the muck and the mire of this life, oh God, but to walk in the spirit according to the spirit that we might walk by faith and receive the promise of your word, oh God. You said, Father, that if we seek your kingdom and its righteousness, that all the things that we concern ourselves with will be added unto us. And, Father, we are believing you as we are seeking your kingdom, that you're not only a provider, but that you are a way maker and a protector. 
That nothing that the enemy has plotted and planned for us will come nigh our dwelling unless you have determined that it is a stepping stone into our next. And Father, we are believing that every trial, every tribulation that is assigned to us is in fact a stepping stone to our next. That Father, you're going to turn what the enemy means for evil. You're going to turn it around for our good. And in the meanwhile, we're going to give you praise as if we already have the victory. So today, God, be praised and be magnified in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the midst of our trouble, in the midst of our trial, in the midst of our difficulties, in the midst of our challenges. Be glorified, O oh God. Be high and be lifted up, O oh God. May your train fill the temple of our dwelling places, O oh God. Oh God, be glorified even right where we are. If it's dark, bring light. If it's depression, God, bring, God lift up our bowed down heads. Whatever we are having to navigate through, Give us victory in the name of the Lord Jesus, even while we're in it. May your name be glorified in our lives. And Father, for Judy, we pray. For, for our seasoned saints, we pray. For all of them whose body is being attacked by this coronavirus, we pray, oh God, that you will give victory in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, bless our time together this morning. Give us clarity of thought. Enable us, empower us to regurgitate everything that you've spoken to us that your people might be edified while we exalt and lift you. It's in the powerful, the matchless name of the Lord Jesus that we pray and give thanks. Somebody type in there, amen, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, amen. I've been, thank you, Jay. I've been working, beloved, out of the book of Galatians uh, and I'm going to continue with, a, with an assignment, if you will, out of that book uh, today. I'm going to go into chapter 3 and chapter 4 to try to bring even greater clarity uh, to, to not only the book and the principles uh, that are being taught in the book, but, but I believe that God is saying something particular to me. Uh, to say to not only Itopians, but for those who join us, who join us and trust the word of God in our lives. Uh, I, 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 I'm going to have to be very careful today because some of what some of what is stirring in my spirit is somewhat controversial uh, because it is it is uh, uh, prophetic, uh, but it is also it is also enlightening uh, to the moment. God is God is doing something, beloved. That that that, that I've been charged, along with other preachers and pastors and prophets, uh, have been charged to disclose, to unveil to the people of God. And so I need you all to to, to walk very carefully uh, with me this morning as I try to as I try to navigate uh, through this. Uh, through this maze of revelation and 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 weave together, if you will, all of the different thoughts and uh, perspectives and revelations that the Lord is birthing in me during this season. God, God is in fact, and I want you all to hear what I'm saying to you, because I don't want to sound like a broken record, and I certainly don't want to sound like a like a religious uh, uh, zealot. But 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 God is doing something that is profound in this season, and and and. and and we are required to search that thing out. The Bible says that it is the glory of the Lord to conceal the th a thing. It is the honor of kings to search it out. Uh, it is up to us to begin to dig into the word of God and search the heart and the mind of God, even the face of God, that the revelations that God is releasing in the earth realm might be unveiled to those of us who are searching after him. Amen, somebody. Uh, but, but sometimes, beloved, when we really truly search after God, what God begins to reveal to us is not always comfortable. Sometimes the Lord begins to talk to us about what he is doing and, 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 and why he is doing it. And sometimes for those of us who are truly called of God, sometimes God will show you some things that will discomfort you because it goes against the grain of the times. Uh, but nevertheless, those of us who are truly called of God are required to speak what God is speaking. 
amen somebody, so that the people of God are never in bondage uh, to the elements of this world, keeping them from the promises of God that he desires us to walk in. And so it is incumbent upon us, we as prophets and pastors and teachers of the word of God, it is incumbent upon us to teach and to preach the word of God in such a way that it propels the people of God into the promises of God so that God is always made manifest in the earth realm so that those that need him can see him in us and turn toward him and glorify the Father. But many times because we are committed to a thing that has lost its potency, sometimes it's difficult if not impossible for God to be made manifest in the lives of God's people because we are operating in a season and a system that has been disqualified. And sometimes God commissions us, those of us who have been given the gift of prophecy and, and, and who have been give, given the gift of gab, if you will, uh, to pronounce to the world, particularly the kingdom of God, what God is doing so that we can move along with God. When we begin to move along with God, we begin to be used of God to manifest the purpose of God and the person of God in the earth realm. Follow me here. God sometimes will disrupt our situations. Sometimes he will dismantle our systems. Sometimes he will, uh, uh, you know, uh, dismantle our protocols and show us its shortcomings and why we have not seen signs, wonders, and miracles. Perhaps it's because we are given to the traditions and doctrines of men that make the word of God of none effect. And every now and then God will arrest a people uh, that will turn their face toward him in order to get a revelation from him in order to speak it to the people so that the people can walk lockstep to walk according to the heartbeat of God into the promise of God. So sometimes, sometimes that, that, that assignment is uncomfortable. Sometimes that, that, that assignment is not convenient. And I feel like I'm in this assignment in this season where the Lord is requiring something of me that is going to discomfort those who already don't like me. Sometimes the Lord will give us an assignment that will not only discomfort those that love you but will provoke those that don't like you. And I feel like I'm in this precarious place, this precarious position where I'm being forced to teach something uh, and unveil something uh, that's going to, that's going to uh, cause a little discomfort. I'm in, I'm in Galatians, the third chapter. I'm going to try my best to be, to be calm because I want to release this word this revelation and the many dimensions, uh, facets of this word. Uh, I would that you all would go back and, and, and you would rehearse and read a chapter two and three in its entirety and even chapter four. Uh, I've already uh, spoken and taught out of chapter five and I'm believing God that today, if I'm able to get through this, that this is gonna be my last uh, assignment out of Galatians for now. But go with me to Galatians 3. I'm going to begin reading at verse 26 of Galatians 3, and we're going to read on into chapter 4. There is a particular thing that I want to bring out of this text, and then I'm going to release something that God has given me to release. I want to talk to you this morning. Uh, we're talking about kingdom challenges. Uh, uh, last, week's, last week's assignment had to do with I'm graced for this. That, 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 that what, Paul was, what Paul was talking about real quickly, what Paul was talking about was the differences, the differences between his assignment in the earth and Peter's assignment in the earth and or the other apostles' assignment. That, that they came to an agreement that Paul was assigned to the Gentiles while Peter was assigned to the Jews. And that where, where, where Peter and the other apostles operated according to a system that was specifically designed for the Jews, Paul was not given to that system. And he was in fact saying that I'm graced for the Gentile. 
I'm graced for this word, this revelation that's being released as a result of his being born in the kingdom. I'm graced for speaking about the grace of God, uh, about salvation through professed faith in Christ Jesus. He said, I'm graced for this. And one of the things that we drew from that is that you have to have confidence in your assignment. That even when your assignment is categorically opposed by those who are given to another system, you cannot allow their loyalty to another system cause you to question the, the, the assignment that is upon your life. You have to know what you believe. You have to stand in what you believe, even if it means being misunderstood, even if it means being ostracized, even if it means being, uh, being cursed by those who think they have authority and a power over you, you have to know what you believe and stand in what you believe. Chapter 2 of Galatians. Chapter 3 of Galatians, Paul is continuing his chastisement of the Galatian church because they have allowed others to come in and poison the doctrine that Pastor Paul has taught them. Now, I'm reading at verse 26. I hope that you'll go with me and stay with me. I'm going to give you a lot to think about today. Verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, we already got a problem in the text. Already got a problem in the text because you are talking about a patriarchal society. You are talking about a society where women were not even considered second-class citizens. They were basically considered the property of their men and or their fathers. But yet here is Paul saying something that is quite controversial, not only to the Jew, but also to the Gentile. He says that if you are in Christ Jesus, God has disrupted your, your social systems and he has caused every Jew and every Greek. He says there is neither, there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, the bond, the free, the male. The female, he says, for you are all one in Christ. In other words, we are all equal. There are no big eyes and little U's. There is not a hierarchy in this thing. God says there is no favoritism. God has no respect of any man. He says we are all equal. Now, we all have our different assignments, but we are all equal in the eyes of God. Help me, Holy Ghost, to teach this thing called this word of God. Now, look at chapter 4, verse 1. Now I say that the heir, pay close attention. That the heir, long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son and made of a woman, made of a woman, uh, made under the law. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God had sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Now, y'all have your seat. Y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. Now, there are several levels, aspects, dimensions that I want to release into your spirit today. Last week I talked about I'm graced for this. This week I simply want to talk about transition. Transition. That God is doing something. So I've been, you know, for the last several months I've been attempting to teach the word of God out of this heart that I have for understanding the times that we are in. Follow me here. 
Because my heart desire as a pastor is that I equip the people of the Inspiring Temple of Praise Church with the necessary tools in order to navigate these difficult times and these transitions that God has us in. I'm not that person that want to take advantage of you while we are in this unstable time. I am that person that searched the word of God in order that I might teach and preach in such a way that the people of God are equipped to mentally make it through, to emotionally make it through, to, to spiritually make it through, to psychologically make it through, and not just make it through, but come through it with victory, having enlarged our territory as a result of the revelation that is released during times of persecution for God speaks to us he releases revelations of himself when we are facing challenges and so whereas the enemy desires to use the challenge to discourage you and to throw you off of your assignment whereby God will be glorified God desires to use the challenge to show you himself in a more an enlightened and intimate way. But we, the people of God, must learn how to pant after him even while we're going through difficulties so that the Lord can do exactly what the God, what the Lord wants to do, and that is to reveal himself to us even while we're going through difficult seasons. So I've been asking the Lord, what do I teach the people? How do I make uh, this season plain to the people so that we can draw out of this season the necessary tools in order to walk in victory? My prayer as a pastor and a prophet of God is that I always speak the word of God in such a way to where the people are equipped to walk in victory. My desire is that you walk in victory. And so I've been seeking God and asking God, what meaneth this season of shutdown? What are you doing in allowing an economy to be shut down? Allowing our ministries to be shut down. What are you doing as it relates to allowing, you know, uh, uh, requiring of us to physically distance ourselves, socially distance ourselves, stay away from loved ones and family and friends and not be able to assemble the body of Christ, not be able to go to work on a regular basis, have to wear a mask in order to go into a store, have to separate yourself from other people if you're sitting in a restaurant. What meaneth this shutdown? And I heard the Lord say to me this week, uh, uh, most particularly on last night, that he is transitioning us. That there is a transition happening amongst us. That in fact, get this, I'm going to come back to it in just a moment. Uh, that in fact, what the Lord is doing is methodically dismantling systems that have held his people in bondage. As a matter of fact, he is dismantling everything that we have put our faith in. He has, he, has, he has dismantled everything that we have turned to as it relates to provision and protection. That we are in a season of volatility that, that speaks of transition. That when we come through this, we're going to see God in a new and living way. Now, the question might be, what does this have to do with Galatians and what Paul is challenging the people of Galatia with there in chapter 3? Well, Pastor Paul has, has gotten perturbed, if you will, with the people of Galatia because, as you've heard me say before, because they have allowed Judaizers to come in and call into question what Pastor Paul has taught them as it relates to their salvation in Christ. These Judaizers have infiltrated the church 
and cause them to consider that there are some other things that they must do in order to be saved and walk in the promises of God. Paul has issue with this because Pastor Paul taught them by way of faith and not by law. He taught them that you are saved by faith and not by law. He taught them that if in fact you were saved by the law, it makes the work of Christ of none effect. And so what the Judaizers have done, they have called into question the work of Christ, the finished work of Christ as it relates to salvation. What is happening here? Paul is delineating. He is making clear that there are two systems that are working. Y'all help me. Come on here. There are two systems that are working, that are at work here. And what Paul is saying, the word that I preached to you was a system that God is introducing into the earth realm in order to bring men and women unto him whereby they can now call him Abba Father. The other system did not give them access to God. The other system only brought them to God, but it did not give them access to him. As a matter of fact, the other system required that they have ceremonial things done every year in order for their sins to be forgiven. But Paul is saying now that Christ Jesus has given his life, you no longer have to sacrifice bullocks and goats. You can call on him and call him Abba Father uh, just by having a relationship with him through Christ Jesus. It's a new system. It's a new system. But in order, follow me here, in order for a new system to be introduced, you have to dismantle the old. And what God, what God tells me, what God is telling me, what God is telling me, that what he is doing is dismantling systems. <laughs> My God, I wish I had time. And so, and so let, 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 let me do this real quick. I'm, I'm going to talk to you in a moment about perspective, about position, and about promise. And you've been hearing me talk about perspective, position, and promise for, for two, three years now. I'm going to go back to it in just a moment. What we see here in the text is Pastor Paul, because I, I, I have to be guilty of putting this in the atmosphere. Pa 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 Pastor Paul is, is, is chastising them to let them know uh, that the old system desires to keep you in bondage because the old system is fearful of irrelevance. The old system is fearful of irrelevance because the old system wants to control you in such a way, oh, in such a way to where they benefit from your struggle. I'm going to get in trouble. There, 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 there are religious systems that even exist today that, that profit off of your struggle. As long as they can keep you dependent upon them, they can profit off of your off of your struggle. They can profit off of your doubt. They can profit off of your difficulty. They can profit off of your lack of faith. But 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 this new system is requiring of you to walk in a revelation of faith that says that I'm going to make it regardless. So so, so what Paul is teaching, he's, he's teaching about two systems. As a matter of fact, let's go to it. He, he's saying in this new system, there is no Greek a bond. There is no Jew, no Greek, no bond, no free, no male, no female. That, that we are all one in Christ Jesus. This, this new system says that ye are an heir of God through Christ. Now, here is the issue. Paul then says, Paul then says that an heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Two systems. Two systems. Jew, Gentile, uh, a law versus grace. Son, servant. Two systems. Son or servant. Somebody say transition. Son or servant. God, God said to me that I am transitioning uh, 
the kingdom of God, the disciples of Christ, uh, the members of our churches from servanthood to sonship. It's from, 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 from servanthood to sonship. Why is this important? Be, be, because as long as you have the mindset of a servant, you don't have access to the promise, though the promise is yours. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. God, God, God is saying, I am doing something. That, uh, I'm taking away your dependence on an old system. And I am birthing in you a system whereby you have direct access to me. And you can walk in a promise that was not afforded to you because your perspective was one of a servant. So God... Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost, to, to release this word. God, God, God is saying, the reason I won't let you go to church, the reason I won't let you go to conventions, the reason that I won't let you have revivals, the reason I won't let you have conferences is because you are no longer to be dependent upon a revival. You are no longer to be dependent upon a, a, a conference. You are no longer to be dependent upon some system that has run its course. I am birthing in you a level of maturity Maturity, whereby you walk in a blessing and a promise that I release directly to you and not through another sin. Y'all, uh, uh, oh God, God. Yes, Lord, God is dismantling. He is dismantling systems. He is dismantling protocols. And, and, and what is happening, what is happening is that the people of God are being required to have a personal relationship with God whereby God speaks to you directly. So he has, he has literally made it impossible for us to gather. <laughs> because he is transitioning us. So, so, so Paul is said, Paul is talking about, oh, help me, ghost, Holy Ghost. Paul is talking about two systems. He says, he says, as long as you are given to the old system, you are a servant that has, that has, that has uh, 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 benefits but can't walk in them. There are promises that are yours that you can't access because your perspective is religious. And so what God is doing, y'all don't like me, God is dismantling religious institutions and he's doing, the other day, the other day, I'm running out of time, Lord help me tonight. Uh, the other day, I had lunch with one of my pastor friends. We had breakfast, actually. Uh, one of my pastor friends who works for uh, General Motors. And he began to talk to me about, he said something that, that, that I did not at the time fully appreciate. But just like God, somebody will say something that I hear uh, but comes up later as a revelation. And so what he said, he says that, uh, he says that, he, said, he says, Jordan, he says, ma'am, uh, I'm telling everybody, excuse me, GM, he says, but I'm telling everybody not to buy uh, trucks, uh, uh, SUVs that are built by GM uh, in 20 and 21. He says, don't buy anything until the 22 comes out. I was like, why, man? He's like, he's like because, because of the shutdown, because of the shutdown, GM was not able to properly retool. And because they were not able to properly retool, he says, Jordan, these trucks that are coming off the line are being required to be repaired as soon as they come off the assembly line. Because they are not properly, re they have not properly retooled the plant. Every truck coming off the line is now having to go into repair because they are not being built properly. Y'all gonna get this in a minute. Come on, I, I, I know, I know. Like some of y'all, you know, probably rode the short bus too. Uh, uh, 
So, so, so he says, he said, he says, uh, the plant has not properly been retooled, so everything that we build is substandard. So, so he says, we're trying to build a new product with old tooling. And as a result of the old tools, the product that is coming out is conflicted. It's not what it has been designed to be because we are using old tools to build a new product and we are producing substandard products that require immediate repair. I'm about to mess up somebody in just a moment. What God began to tell me is that we, the church, have been producing products using an old tool, and we wonder why we can't make it through dark days. Because we're trying to operate in a new system with old tools. So they're having to repair. That's why, that's why so many of us, oh, help me, go, Holy Ghost. That's why so many of us have leaned so heavily on the church. That's why many of us have leaned so heavily on running to revivals. That's why many of us have leaned so heavily on going to conventions. And many men and women of God have been enriched because of your need for that revival have been enriched because of your need for that convention, have been enriched because of your need for that, for that large gathering. And God is saying, I'm dismantling it because what they, are, what they are doing, they are pushing out a product that is, in fact, substandard. So I had to allow a pandemic to shut the whole system down so that the system can be retooled. And so what is happening, God, y'all don't like me, and I know a whole lot of preachers and pastors and bishops and, 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 and fellowships and organizations ain't going to like this word being released, but what God is saying, I'm making it so that the average person is no longer reliable or relying on a system that they can have access directly to me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so Paul, Paul Paul is challenging the church. He's saying, he says, as long as you are, uh, he said, let's, let's look at it. Now I say that, that the heir, long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. He says, but you are under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might, be re that we might receive the adoption of sons. Because ye are sons, God has sent forth his spirit, the spirit of his son in your heart crying, Abba, Father. What he is saying, very uh, logistically what he is saying is that, is that the Jew operated under a system that God says, I've released to you a promise through Father Abraham that cannot be accessed by the law. It can only be accessed by the Spirit of Faith in Christ. So I want to make sure I get that out there so that somebody won't be able to say, well, he didn't teach that text. That text is real simple. That the people of God have a choice as to whether or not they're going to operate in a law system or a faith system by way of Christ. And if you operate by a faith system, you then have to move from servanthood to sonship, whereby now you have access to every promise of God that's been released upon Abraham. I wish I had time. I would talk about this, and maybe I'll do it uh, if I'm able to teach Tuesday night. M maybe, maybe I'll be able to do it Tuesday night because, because the promise to Abraham is that blessings I will bless thee. <laughs> multiply, I will multiply thee. He says, I will make your, your, your offsprings as the sands of the sea. He says, you will not be able to be numbered. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God is saying, blessings I will bless thee. 
multiply and I will multiply thee, but you got to change your perspective. The only thing that's keeping you from the promises of God is your perspective and your positioning. And what God is saying, the reason I have dismantled or I'm in the process of dismantling this old church protocol, this old system, is because I am repositioning you. The position that I am putting you in is giving you greater capacity. Greater capacity. Because the promise I have for you is too large for the old system. And if you're going to walk in the promise of God, in the blessings of God that I desire you to walk in, not only must I retool you, I got to pull you out of that system, shut that system down, and totally dismantle it and show you that you're able to stand on your own two feet, that you don't have to rely upon a system that is antiquated and old and ineffective, that in fact I can work things out in your life if you just have faith in me. Uh, so, 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 perspective, position, promise. What God told me, take this home with you. God told me that, in fact, these dark days are a time of enlightenment. This is a year of enlightenment. God told me to tell you that what he is doing is teaching us that what we thought we needed, we don't actually need. I'm going to finish with this. Uh, am, am I all right, y'all? Y'all good? Well, God began to tell me, I, 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 I taught a lesson uh, a few weeks ago. One of my pastors invited me to, to reiterate or come on his show or his broadcast and teach one of my messages that I talked because he wanted his people to hear it directly from me. And I went on, and so we opened it up for questions. And the one question that was asked, they asked me is that, is that how do you see the church after this pandemic after this shutdown what's going to happen and what and what and and and, and I didn't know uh, in detail how to answer that question at that time all I could tell her is that we will never be the same again but what God has been sharing with me and wrestling with me is that is that he says what I'm doing I'm I'm I'm, I'm teaching the people to know that they don't need what they thought they needed I wish I had two or three of y'all that they don't need what they thought they needed, which means that they are no longer easily manipulated. <laughs> so, so he says in this, so, 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 so there, there is this dichotomy, there, 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 there is this, there, this paradoxical uh, a reality, and, and, and that is in these dark and dismal days, God is enlightening us. <laughs> he is showing us something in the midst of this pandemic to help us to realize, you know what? I don't need you like I thought I did. Because now I'm being required to reach within myself and discover that I have some resources that I never tapped into. And because I'm no longer a servant, I have moved over into sonship. Now have, I have access to some power that cannot be accessed except by faith in God, not faith in a church and or its system. Play softly, Jay. I got to stop. I've given too much. God, God, God is telling me, he says, it's never going to be the same again. I started... Stay with me for just a few more moments. I started a couple of months back referring to myself when I speak to you as your life coach, your life coach, your, your spiritual advisor. Uh, I'm moving away from bishop, uh, number one, because it's being undermined. Uh, it's, it's, it's being totally disrespected. It has lost its potency because uh, everybody's a bishop now. But God, God, God made it plain to me. He's saying, I'm dismantling that anyway. He says, titles won't mean anything. He says, in, in the kingdom of God, there is neither bond nor free, Jew nor Greek, male nor female. He says, I'm about to dismantle this hierarchy. Because this system of hierarchy has made some men very rich. Because they are getting wealthy off of your dysfunction. 
God is saying, I'm trying to move my people to a place of grace and faith to where they no longer need certain things. That now they support it because they are, they are grown-ups in the kingdom. Not dependent upon certain things and certain people who only want to manipulate you. God is transitioning us. This is a season of enlightenment. I know... I know I'm going to get in trouble. But, but, but the reason Christ was killed was because of his assignment to enlighten the people to the kingdom. The reason the apostles were tortured and put in jail was because of the message, the assignment that was upon their life. The powers that be did not want to lose the influence the manipulative influence that they had over the people. God is saying to me that, that he is growing us in this time of transition, moving us into a place of grace and faith uh, that's going to give us access to the promise because we are sons, and because we are sons, we can cry, Abba, Father. So the church will never be the same again. Preachers, we're going to have to learn how to be coaches and walk people through life by giving them revelation and then leaving them alone instead of being so manipulative. All this, all this running across the country doing conventions and revival, God has said to me that it's over. It's over. At least for a season, it is over. That we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to redefine our role in the lives of God's people. That we are no longer gonna be governors and tutors. We're no longer gonna be governors and tutors. That we're not gonna hold the law over them. We're not gonna hold certain manipulative, manipulative tactics over them to keep them, uh, to keep them loyal to us. God has said our responsibility is to grow them to a place to where they can walk in the promises of God freely. I know y'all don't like that because many people have gotten wealthy off of, this, off of the dysfunction of, of Christ's disciples. God is saying that day is over. I'm requiring of them to have a relationship with me because they are stuck at home in their own houses. They are having to search the scriptures themselves. They are having to pray for themselves. They, they, they might be able to get on social media and talk to one another and, and, and all of this kind of stuff. But the bottom line is you're going to have to start standing on your own two feet. And when you start doing that, it makes people that are in my assignment less relevant on a daily basis, we become your coach. We become your encourager. We become the person that helps direct you to your promise, but we are not lording over you and what belongs to you anymore. Y'all don't like me. I know I ain't going to get a whole lot of amens. I'm sure not going to get a whole lot of support from other pastors and preachers who, who, who feast off of the dysfunction of God's people. God is saying that day is over. I'm growing my people to a place to where they can see me for themselves. That they no longer rely upon an individual preacher or an individual church. That I'm, I'm a part of this preacher. I'm a part of this church. He says, I am growing my people to a place to where their perspective is broadened to the point to where I can position them. I can, I can posture them in order to pour into them that they might walk in the promise. I'm done. I'm done. This ain't say popular, I know. But I got to say what God is saying to me. Pastor Paul got upset with Galatia because they were putting themselves back into a bondage that they were freed from. And Pastor Paul is saying, you are compromising your promise by being committed to a system that has been disqualified. I say unto you, I top, that we will never be the same again because we're going to have a house of sons, not servants. Because we are taught in the word of God and we are pursuing the promises of God because of what we know of him as a result of this pandemic. Father, I thank and I praise you for this word. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that even if offense has been taken, that you will give 
you will give breakthrough. You will, you will help us to see the error of our ways and, and that we will begin to walk as sons and not simply servants. I pray, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus that, uh, that you, will, you will give us the courage to say no longer will I be manipulated. No longer will I be held in bondage to a system that has been disqualified. But God, that you will do a work in us that will cause us to be the great people that you have declared we are. And Father, for that person that, that is listening to me, that know you not in the pardon of their sins, they are, they are given to a worldly system, the elements of this world that have kept them in bondage. I pray, God, that even now that your spirit will release them now they will come to know you in the pardon of their sins. They will confess you with their mouth that they believe in their heart that Christ Jesus is Lord of all. And I pray that as they make that prayer, God, to, to repent before you of their sins and receive the Lord Jesus, that they will walk in their salvation free from the elements of this world and from the elements of religion into a deeper relationship with you. Father, if there be one out there that wants to connect with the Inspiring Temple of Praise Church virtually, give them the courage and the wherewithal to do so even now. We thank you for what you are about to do. We thank you. If you will, uh, whenever the, a heavy word of this nature is released, it's incumbent upon us to worship him because I've stirred up some things in the spirit realm. And, and even those in the kingdom that may be uncomfortable with this revelation, uh, I pray that the seeds of this word will be planted in the soil of your soul and you will find it necessary to worship God that it might be, it might be watered and bring forth fruit. So for just a few moments, let's just worship him. Let's just worship him for just a few moments, if you will. This is a heavy word, I know. Worship him. that you've been blessed by the word of God. Minister Camille is going to come and further facilitate our service and receive your tithes and your offerings and give us our benediction. The Lord is transitioning us in these dark and dismal days. He is enlightening, enlightening our pathway, giving us revelation. He is retooling the kingdom of God that we might produce a product that is worthy of his name for this season. Don't be mad. Be retooled that God might be glorified in the earth realm. Listen, I love you to life. I love you for real. Nothing you can do about that. Amen. We want to thank God for this amazing word and thank God for our bishop. So wherever you are, if you could just bless God for him and what an amazing word, a piercing word, but nonetheless an amazing word. It's offering time. This is an opportunity for you to give into the ministry. I am a witness that this is good ground. And as Bishop Jordan was talking about how this is a season of transition, I stand before you this morning 
where my life has definitely went through a season of transition. And just to be very frank and honest with you, that my income has decreased by $1,700 a month over the last six months. And one of the things that I've tried to do is to hear what God is saying and hear those strategies and adjustments that I can make in my own life so that I can live my best life now. And this word this morning only confirmed that the way things have been, they will never be that way again. And that we have to turn our ear to the Lord to make those adjustments in our lives. This past week, when I paid my tithes last Sunday, I'm telling you that I paid those tithes in faith like I have never paid them before. And I was telling one of the other ministers that it's just been difficult. But I'm so very glad that I stood firm on his word because it wasn't even 48 hours later that God answered my prayer. So this morning when I read Psalms 37 to you, I was reading that to you because I've seen God work in my life. And so I want to encourage you to know that this is good ground. This place that we stand in, this moment where God is given this word, it's good ground. There are several ways that you can give into our ministry. Number one, you can text the word ITOP to 71441. That's the first way. The second way is you can definitely go through Givelify. That's a very secure way to give. And more importantly, you can go to our website, inspiringtemplepraise.com and give there. It's through PayPal. It's secure. I encourage you to give your tithes and offerings so into this word and watch God do his part. Amen? Amen. God, we thank you for this word on today, Lord God, that as we all stand in transition, Lord God, that you are giving us strategies and you are giving us keys and you are giving us all the things that we need, Father God, to move forward. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that as we give, Lord God, this will be the last day that we lack. We stand on that in Jesus' name. Let this be a great week, Lord God. Let jobs come. Let answers come, Lord God. Let deliverance come in Jesus' name. The things that we stand in need of, let those things come this week in Jesus' name. We thank you for what you are doing in our lives, and we are forever careful to give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a great week, and see you on Tuesday.